My name is Jacob Peterson. I'm an associate professor at Iwata University. Um, I'm going to talk about how I use Flipgrid in a classroom. It's going to be more of a show and tell. So anyway, it was nice to see you. I hope you enjoy. So briefly the background. This was all done pre-corona world. So um, what we're looking at in our department is our university has been you know, cutting back on uh, funding for call classrooms or computers having, you know, they'd have like old PCs and whatnot. And so it was kind of hard to stay on top of that. And we were considering ideas of like, you know, possibly, you know, providing students with like tablets they can check out or asking them to bring laptops to classes, um, things like that. And so we were thinking, well, why don't we try uh, an application that can work on a smartphone and see if that would work. So that's kind of where we started with the idea. The students we had in our class uh, were uh, freshman students, about 40 students in the class. And most of them were either from the science and engineering department or from the agriculture department. It was a year long class. Uh, our study, um, it was done in just the first semester. So most of the information I'll talk about is what happened in the first semester. Uh, why did we do Flipgrid? Well, we have a 100 minute class once a week and we wanted the students to have more engagement with English besides coming to class, doing a little bit of talking in our communication class and that's about it. So we wanted an easy to use program that they can do on their own and we wanted you know, students to be able to use a smartphone you know, just in case they have a computer or if they have like spotty internet they can do it on campus with a smartphone or whatever. So what is Flipgrid? Well, Basically, Flipgrid is an application that works on a, on a phone or internet browser on your computer. It's a social learning platform. It was designed basically for uh, classroom, classroom interaction. So instructors are, are they basically, instructors, they set up a topic or a forum, and then they, they put the students in those, those areas, and the students can post videos and reply to each other, and the instructor can reply to them. So if you think of it like a, a old school like blog where someone like writes a message and other people can reply and you know there's just threads of replies. It's like that but video style. So to sign up as a teacher you either need to use a Microsoft account or Google account. It's free. You use your uh, one of those accounts. You sign in and create it and then you, you set up students. The students uh, are free as well. So if it's an education no cost for anyone. Another note is students aren't required to create an account. Basically the instructor assigns a username and like a login for the students. So the enrollment options with Flipgrid, actually there's three different types. Uh, the, the first type is that uh, you, if your school uses a Microsoft or, or Google account, the students can just log in with their actual school ID and you're done. Our school didn't have that, so we couldn't do option one. The second option is to make a public grid where basically anyone in the world can see it. That's obviously an issue with privacy concerns, so we said no on that one. But the third option worked quite well. You enroll students with a student ID, which basically you create yourself. So the nice thing that they have is they give it an Excel template. You can just fill it in with like the student IDs and names and just upload it. And then it will, you know, it'll add the students from there. What we did, we used the university student ID uh, for, their, for their logins, and it worked out fine. So briefly, as you can see here, this is like the main page on a login. Let's talk about all the grids I have. So what we had to do is make a grid for each group. Uh, I will show more here in a little bit, but so basically um, all the students were assigned a group. These uh, groups are based off of a, an academic reader and then they had to discuss things based off of that. So they, so as a teacher, I create the groups, but then you click into the group, you can create like the video discussion area. So you can say, you know, talk about this, do this, do that and then they go in there and they make their videos. So if I, so I go into the main page and then I click on like energy group, then I click on like the final presentation, then it'll take you to the videos. Once you click on the, the student's name, you'll be taken to the video page. Here you can see these are actually the replies. If there's a bunch of replies, there'll be a bunch of little bubbles. As you can see, I've kind of blurred out everyone except for the first student here who uh, I didn't need to blur them out because they use one of the stickers. That's an option you can use in Flipgrid. You can put like, you know, silly hats on or smiley faces. And this student stickered their face out. But so once you click on the video, you can see they have a video of themselves talking. Uh, this student turned on closed caption option, which is actually kind of funny. It's not bad. It's like YouTube that has like auto closed captioning functionality, which is great. But you know, when you have students with a non-native accent trying to have a AI, you know, closed caption automatically and there's some 
weird sentences pop up. Uh, but anyway, so in this view here, you have a student's view, the student, like they're, what they're talking about. And then if I click on this bubble here, I can re leave a reply and then other students can leave replies and it can be chained from there. So you see the list of you know, little bubbles of people leaving replies. Uh, this assignment, we actually had a rubric attached. So this is what the grading rubric is. And so I just, I would click and pick how many points per item on here. And I could type in the feedback here and give them feedback as well. There's some other options here. Uh, this is a, called a mixtape. So basically you can take a bunch of videos and make them into like a, a mixtape. And so other so students can see all like the, the cool highlighted videos. You can you can star someone as being good, or you can say this, this video is fire and kind of promote that student's good job or good work. Okay, so as you can see here, I logged into Flipgrid and it has your name and all that stuff. And this is actually the two semesters together. That's why it's going to show more hours and and whatnot than I said earlier. So if we go into, so here's all the, the grids. These are my, my grids where you call, um, like basically your, your, your forums in a, in a blog or something like that, or discussion posts. So I had to create each one of these grids. It's not too hard when you create a new grid. So for example, I can add a new grid here. I give a name, I have to enroll my, my students. Um, and then from there you can go next, right? And then once you have a grid, you can actually copy it in multiple times. You can copy some of the, so for example, um, you can copy in like, I have this like Pecha Kucha assignment, I can copy into each grid. So that's a little bit better. You don't have to recreate assignment every time. You do have to create a new grid for your groups, but you can basically uh, create one assignment and just, you know, copied into all the other grids. So you go into the grid here, and as you can see, if I, I could actually include like a, a video of myself here. I could have a picture, a GIF. Um, if I could have some kind of description here, right now we just say final, but you could actually have like a, a text box with a bunch of information here. If the students click this, it's cool. It's an immersive reader. It'll actually read what you have. So that's nice. The students can actually listen to the English as well. And then if I click on the student video here, the student video will pop up. And um, this is where you can include a uh, your reply, or you can also put in your points and your feedback and all that stuff. Now, obviously, you know for privacy issues, I blurred out everything so you can't really see the students or their grades or anything like that. If I hit reply, it's really simple. You get a video of yourself looking at the reply and you can make a nice little video. As you can see, I'm talking and when I'm done, I can hit this and then you can say next. You have a preview, you can edit. You can take a selfie. You can include like pictures on your selfie. The students really loved using these tools. So I can click that on. Take the picture. And then you can actually add the video. Hit next. And you are good to go. So if I say complete. You can now see my response. If I click on this, then other people can, you know, you can go see my own, I can go see my own response. And that's pretty much how it works. It's pretty straightforward. So now, as, as you can see how Flipgrid is pretty user friendly, you might ask, well, what kind of stuff do you have to do to prep the students, right? Well, we actually had to do quite a bit of preparation to get the students going. Um, the first thing, first week, we walked the students through installing the application on their phones. We had to get them to download the app on either from the Apple Store or from the Android Store. It's a free download, but you still have to walk them through and you know make sure they do it right. Uh, then we demonstrated how to make a video, and we asked the students to make a simple video to test out the program. So we're like, you know, just give a quick, you know, 30 second introduction, your name, your faculty, what you're studying, things like that. And then we had to make them reply to each person. Well, a handful of people, I think we said two or three people they had to reply to just so they can get the functionality down. We did that all in the class together. So we used like one of our class times, like about 
20 minutes or so of class time to set it up and do it. Once they actually got it installed and once they're able to log in and get to a Flipgrid, it's pretty easy. They, uh, they, they are pretty intuitive on clicking the buttons and doing it. It's just the first few steps you had to kind of walk them through. So now I'm going to briefly talk about how we uh, did flip, how we use Flipgrid in the classroom. So what we did, we ended up doing two different things. We had the reading response and feedback, and then we had a speech. So for the reading response and feedback, the students were asked to read from a graded reader. Uh, we use National Geographic, and they're all like focused on specific science things or um, social issues. And then we had them post a video talking about it, what they read, and then with their groups, um, the group members had to provide feedback and ask questions. And so we, we basically put them in groups. So as you saw earlier, like I said, energy group. Well, it'd be like a group of four students who focus on that one reader, the energy, that we talked about energy. And so they were assigned one chapter to read and they'd have to talk about it and whatnot. It worked pretty well. Um, we noticed that students probably need a little more coaching on good feedback examples. You know, some students would just pop on their 10 second videos and, and say something like, good job. And that was like, you know, not very helpful. So I need more coaching on how to provide good feedback. Uh, the other way we used the Flipgrid tool was for speeches. And um, so this is how it basically worked. We had the students, they were asked to work in groups to discuss a reading assignment, those readers again. And then each group had a different topic, like I said, like energy or global warming or you know water resources or something like that, right? And then after they had discussion groups, um, they talked about like some of the key points on what they read and they discussed it with together as a group. And then they each individually had to make a video um, basically uh, talking about the problem, what the book talked about, giving like possible solutions that the book talked about and then their own opinion upon it. And they all said it had a good instruction and conclusion. So they did the first video and we had the rubric and feedback given to them, basically saying, hey, good job, but here's some things you need to adjust. And then they were allowed to make a second video that improved upon their first video. So basically the same same video subject matter, it's just, you know, it's supposed to be like improved or, you know, uh, updated since they, you know, had their feedback. We use the rubrics to provide the student feedback so they know what to do and improve the next video. And generally the students were happy with that. Most of them commented that they liked the feedback so they knew they needed to focus on something uh, more specifically. And so they liked that. So it worked out pretty well. Now, Finally, I'm going to talk about the takeaway. So according to Flipgrid, um, in the first semester, we had eight, almost 8,500 views with 102 hours of engagement. Now, the thing is, is Flipgrid is kind of ambiguous when it comes to what is the engagement. The views make sense. Um, anytime you click on a video, it counts as a view. So even if I, so even if I watch a one second portion of a three minute video, that counts as a view. So it kind of got a little inflated there, as you can see. We had 40 students, and they had to have so many like you know, replies and stuff to each other. So I can see how it builds up, and then us teachers went in there and also viewed and replied. So I would also build that stuff up. But basically, we did exit survey, ask questions about you know the, the students' comfort of you know, comfort of using the application, um, if the students found the videos useful, if they would do it again, and other things. We asked about 20 questions, if I remember correctly. We used a five-point scale. Uh, one was, you know, considered bad, and five was good, right? And most responses actually were three to five. Of course, there was for every single, you know, question there would be a couple people give like a one or two, and it's usually like technology-related issues. Uh, but overall, it is pretty positive, either neutral or positive. So our takeaway was that it showed that students were actually, well, most of the students anyway, were actually interested in engaging with tech in a classroom and they found videos were, were not so bad. Um, that's one, one thing I forgot to mention earlier though too is that when you first say the student, tell the students they have to record themselves, they're all like, oh, I don't want to. But you have to tell them, you know, hey, it's, it's not that bad. It's only going to be the class that sees it. It's not going to be public. You're not going to be a YouTube star. It's not going to be out there. It's just you and the class. And so that kind of eased them a little bit into it. And from there, they, they started actually having some fun with it. Uh, some good things we, we noted is that um, there's many hours of engagement outside of class, right? Even though we couldn't really calculate, you know, we couldn't really figure out exactly how Flipgrid calculated the hours, we still had a good number of hours outside of, you know, the 100 minutes a week in class. So we had some students actually, you know, engaging with each other in English, which is great. Um, students were taught how to use English in a modern techie way, which 
actually um, worked out well, if, you know, now with the whole coronavirus, you know, worldwide issue. Uh, but the students felt more comfortable doing like video conferencing style stuff because of this. Um, they didn't feel so bad being from a video. And so it is actually quite useful for them. And overall, the students that we, we noticed that students actually improved on the videos, especially the final ones where we had the, the initial video, the, the speech ones where they had to do initial video and then we gave them feedback and then do a second video. They actually improved quite a bit. Um, we think probably because, well, you know, we, we give them points on how to improve, but also, you know, nice thing about Flipgrid, you can make a video over and over and over again. So this um, basically helps students, you know, perfect the perfect video, right? Um, so this gave them more time practicing their pronunciation or whatever they, they felt like they needed to focus on in speaking. Some of the, the bad things back to engagement hours, like we didn't really know exactly where the hours came from, so that was kind of confusing. Um, internet was an issue. Uh, that was something we had to you had to consider. Um, when students were doing a video and, and, and they did to upload the video, they lose internet connection. Sometimes they would have to do the video again. So when you do Flipgrid, I forgot to mention this, but when you do Flipgrid, you can do two things. You can do the video and save it to your phone and upload it, upload it later. Or you can do Flipgrid where you, you, you know, do the video and upload right away. So if you do the video and upload right away, if during that upload time you lose any internet connection, the video is lost. And so we had a couple of you know, frustrated students when that happened. We, we knew there was the option to do that, download to their phone and upload you know, again. But that was more training, more steps, and the students, you know, we didn't want to overwhelm the students. So we basically just stuck with just do this method. So, you know, record and upload. And so that got rid of the whole extra steps. You know, this is how you download it. You find it on your phone. You upload it. So we didn't train that. So you, that would have been a work at round, but we didn't go with that. And for the most part, how we got around the Internet issue was just have the students use Wi-Fi on campus. Um, now. That generally worked fine. And the Wi-Fi on campus is we we have is okay. It's decent. It's a lot better than the cell phone reception they had. Um, so once the students connect to the Wi-Fi, they're pretty much good to go. Almost every week, though, we had to remind students, um, you know, don't forget to check, you know, you know, sign into your Wi-Fi because we always have some students saying like, oh, you know, I can't get the video to work because they're trying to on their you know their phone day, uh, phone plan. So I always remind them that you connect to the Wi-Fi. Also, unless there is a peer evaluation set up, as a teacher, you're required to spend a good amount of time watching videos. I guess it's no different than reading a bunch of papers, but in this situation, you have to actually listen to a video. Um, so as a teacher, you have to decide which one's better for you. But yeah, it does require extra time to you know, watch every video. And then recently, I've also noticed that Flipgrid added more presentation-friendly tools, which is great. Like you can set up a video to like you know upload certain items or link to certain other applications, which is great. But I still argue that tool is best used as a vlog or conversation tool as opposed to a speech tool. Uh, that was an issue we I, I felt like it was a bit of an issue when we had the students do speeches, like someone hold up papers and rattle it and stuff in front of the camera, and so you couldn't hear it. Um, I know that's a bit of an issue. It's I think it's better the tool is better used as, as, a, as a way to um, basically like a, a blog. Like the teacher gives them some kind of topic to talk about, they talk, students reply, and they reply to each other kind of thing. So I'm gonna finish up with some final uh, uh, current, you know, some final reflections and issues I have right now. Um, since the responses are pretty positive last year, I decided to implement this into my Flipgrid class this year, uh, which is, it's working okay, but due to the whole, you know, virus situation around the world, you know, the university locked down and we, we have to do all of our classes online. And so it added another layer of complication where I had to basically walk the students through downloading the application and using it and teach them how to use it all via Zoom. It wasn't too bad. I, I, had, I found YouTube videos I shared with them. We had some how-to documents uh, that some of the other teachers made and we shared that. And so with that, it wasn't too bad, but you have to understand that if you're going to do this in your class, you'll probably have to spend more time than expected to do initial setup with them. Um, also, it would be nice if, like, I think it'd be a lot easier if your school uh, had like a Microsoft or Google account for the students. I think it just it'd be a lot uh, simpler as a teacher to set everything up because every time I make a new grid, I have to enroll the students into the grid, which can be a little. A little cumbersome, but not difficult. 
And finally, you have to remember, if you do this, there's going to be some hand-holding required. Um, I came from America, so I, I'm used to students being used to sharing everything online or, you know, everything's on social media, good or bad, right? And so Japanese students aren't quite like that. Like, Americans love to share the, every little part of their life on social media. But the Japanese students have to kind of, you know, coax them and say, hey, you know, it's okay. You can show your face on the video. It's just you and your classmates. You know, please share more, open up more. So you actually need to demonstrate what is a good video. And you need to, you have to give like examples of like, how, how do you expect them to have good interaction? What kind of questions are good questions to ask? Like, what kind of feedback do you look for in videos? So you have to kind of like, you know, structure it and scaffold it and say, hey, these are kind of the things you should do to make your engagement better. And then finally, I also recommend a low stakes assignment to begin with when you first try it out in the class. For example, this semester I'm using Flipgrid in my, one of my classes. And so I, I made them do an assignment. The first assignment in Flipgrid was basically introduction. I gave them some bullet points on what to cover, and then they have to reply to two other students. It was, it was a graded assignment, but I just counted it as attendance that, that week because I didn't want to like punish them harshly for... Um, you know, messing up a new tool. So I always recommend something like this to uh, have a low stakes assessment to begin with, or even like a, a freebie, just so they get used to the tool and not get punished for messing up. All right, that concludes my presentation. I hope you enjoyed. All right, thanks a lot.